Hi YouTube, happy Monday, happy new year. And if you're like me and you're living in the DMV metro area, happy snow day. It snowed five to seven inches this morning up until around noon, which meant we had a snow day and we stayed in our houses and apartments, I guess as is typical now, and bundled up in our blankets and clothes like my little girl over here Mangle, who's enjoying my sweater and pullover. There you go, Mangle. I'll let you go back to your restful nap. Anyway, that said, I have something pretty hot and exciting to share with you all on this fine, cold January evening. And that is my TI-95 replacement cassette interface. That's right, you no longer need a cassette recorder to serve as non-volatile storage for your TI-95 calculator, and honestly, probably the TI-74 basic calc and the Compact Computer 40. I'll first explain the theory behind this, and then explain some of the physical parts, how I, how I put this together. So, like many other calculators, pocket computers, and larger personal computers at the time, the TI-95 will store data on cassettes using pulse width modulation. What that means is that the data is encoded by different frequencies. There's certain pulse lengths that I found that correspond with a 1-bit, a true bit, versus a false or 0-bit. Longer pulses correspond to zeros, whereas shorter pulses correspond to ones. And using this Arduino, I'm able to translate those pulses into bits and then into bytes. One thing to note, given that this was originally used to store data on audio recorders, on cassette recorders, is that those pulses are within sound frequency. One big two, there's two big advantages here of, of decoding the pulse, pulse width modulation data on an Arduino as opposed to using a cassette recorder or digital audio recorder. One is through some further inspection on my part, we'll be able to convert those tape format files into keystroke listings and back. I'm going to develop a compiler to do that. And the second thing is I've heard very recently and in the past that it's quite difficult to, to play, play recordings back from a digital audio recorder, you know, an MP3 recorder to the TI-95. I guess cassette recorders were better as far as levels. So you don't have to worry about the sound quality or the proper volume or anything like that. You just decode the pulses straight out of the machine, straight out of the horse's mouth. Anyway, so that's a little bit about the theory of it, about sound frequencies and, and PWM storage. One, one, I guess, now getting into the physical aspect of it, one important consideration for the construction was to use an Arduino Leonardo as opposed to an Arduino Uno. I really need to have hardware handshaking in order for this to work flow control, which the Arduino Uno, at least the clone I got, didn't have in its, in its USB serial adapter. And I need that because the speed of the pulses coming, coming out from the Arduino, being sent from the Arduino to the TI-95, is a lot slower than the baud rate I have to set in order to uh, properly receive data from the TI-95. That's 500 kilobaud. And bringing that up, I should mention that, that this device isn't storing data by itself. It's storing data from the TI-95 onto your handy-dandy Linux machine over here. Although I'm sure Macs would work as they are Unix machines, and Windows machines would probably work too if you just use a terminal, a terminal, terminal emulator. Wow, I'm really tripping over words today. Anyway, let me go back to the calculator and show you a little bit more about the construction. The TI-95 ProCalc, like the TI-74 BasicCalc, has a 10-pin dock bus connector on the back. 
pins three and six are for cassette input and output. That's uh, that's transmitting the PWM data to the Arduino and from the Arduino to the TI-95. And then that black lead is, is the ground lead. I've stacked two Arduino female connectors. I think I'll start for the alpha models, wrapping those two connectors with electrical tape to make it easy to remove. And... Uh, and anyway, so from the adapters, uh, I have, fr from the uh, headers, I have three jumper cables that I, I just mentioned that connect to two PWM pins down here and a ground pin of the Arduino. And that's really it. Of course, to make this simpler for people, I'm going to be pre-programming and assembling these and selling them for $25 a piece. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. I already have 13 people who want to buy one. You'll get the Leonardo programmed with the adapter made and then a USB cable. And with that, a little discussion of the theory behind my interface and the physical construction of it, let's take a look at it in action. I'm going to try transmitting the Mastermind program I've written for the TI-95. I'm also going to point out a, f a, a few of the caveats I guess not caveats, but considerations for how to how to uh, time things for you know when you're sending data from the computer and then and then going through the 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 tape I/O commands on the on the TI ninety five Pro Calc. Okay, let's turn that on. We can see the greeting message. In order to save a program or read a program. I first go to I.O. input output there. You have these nice menus on the bottom. Tape for tape storage, as it shows you there. And let's start by writing a file. I right now have mastermind in memory. I'll enter the file name. I could do program or registers. I'll do program here. And the program area in main memory, which is what you always are saving to disk, I'll put in the file name, MST. There's a little signature at the beginning of the fi of file. I do know a bit about the tape file format. I know that there's duplicate copies of pieces of data and some zero padding to get the timing set up. In between the zero padding and more zero padding is the file name, a signature, so it can you know recognize the proper file when you load it. I'll press Enter. Position tape we don't have to worry about. And before I, I press OK here, I'm going to press Record. It's the opposite for play. And now on this Gallium OS Chromebook I use, this Linux Chromebook, I'm going to get it out of its sleep, go in the terminal, use one of the scripts I have available in a GitHub repository that's linked in the description. And I am going to receive this mastermind file. Anyway, so I'll press enter. I need super user permissions. And anyway, so it now says receiving from TI-95. Press Control c to end after press stop. That's a message that will come up. Okay, so I can put press record. This will say writing for a bit. Eventually, it will say press stop. You can see that there's transmission going on from the LED on the Arduino Leonardo. Let's see how much progress has been made. We're still in our zero padding. And now we're getting into the program, which means this should be done pretty soon. It does take a while. Yeah, so you saw it stopped transmitting, and I'll send a little bit, a bit more an FF byte at the end. And now I can say press stop. I'm going to look at, at the file that came in with XXT. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I can press Control C uh, and double check. Make sure everything looks good, and it does. Okay, so now I'm going to press read, program, MST, enter. And now, remember before I said start, start, uh, start receiving, start the re receiving going before you, you press OK at press record. I'm going to press OK and then start playing. So playing after the prompt. And eventually we should see reading come up. You can see that it is receiving and, you know, receiving the bytes over 
USB serial. There we go. That's excellent. And at the end of that, sending out PWM over the wires. Raw digital pulses. Press stop. Excellent. File MST read. And I know what this file looks like, but I see what I expect at the beginning. If I go to the end, I see the same count there on the program counter. Anyway, so just a quick demonstration that it works. This will be $25 plus shipping. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're interested. I think I'll put an ordering page. This isn't the only cassette interface I plan to make. I plan to expand to the Sharp Pocket computers, especially those that are compatible with the CE-126P. These have 11-pin interfaces. I think it'll be, you know, similar kind of construction, and I know there's a much broader market for that. But anyway, so if you have a TI-74 and TI-95, now you have your own computer as non-volatile storage space. You can save your basic or keystroke programs, and I'll be working on some Linux and Unix, so Mac software that will convert from tape file format to a listing that you can manipulate and back. That should be really exciting. Oh, one other thing, uh, before I recorded this video, I was having some issues saving one program. It turned out that, that whenever I have a uh, right paren next to the int as an integer part of a number function, the TI-95 will not save that right paren. That's, that's pretty interesting. The second I got rid of the two parentheses and put an equal sign, you know, to run that set of operations, I guess a similar kind of effect to parentheses, I didn't have issue. I, I had been a bit concerned about the interface, but I think that that's just an issue in how it's actually a TI-95 issue, not, not my issue. So that's something to watch out for, and I'll put that in the GitHub repository. That said, the, the, the scripts that you need for your uh, Linux PC, Unix, what have you, are in a GitHub repository that I have in the description, and you can take a look at all of that. I'm steadily expanding it. I'll add more pictures, a super simple schematic, and, and everything like that. Anyway, I, I hope you choose to purchase one. Thank you for watching. Have a great evening, and please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Take care, everybody.